if you're a first time home buyer, it can be very overwhelming at first. You've heard this from one friend and this from another, and you've been looking online maybe to see what you think you want to buy and where you want to buy. So I'm going to break down for you exactly the process you should follow so that you do things in the right order. So the first step that you always want to take is you want to check with the lender. And reach out to me if you'd like to, I can give you some recommended lenders, but you, the first step needs to be with a lender for a number of reasons. The first reason is you need to find out what price range that you're gonna be in. And it's not what you can afford, it's what you're comfortable paying. But then I always tell people, hey, you need to know what you wanna spend monthly on a house, and you might qualify for a lot more than what you're able to, per but what you really wanna be spending a month. So going to a lender, finding out what you need to do as far as a down payment um, and what price range you're comfortable in, not what you qualify for, but what you're comfortable as a monthly payment is going to be your first step. And that's the most important step before you start going to look for a house because that's going to tell you what house or what areas that you look for a house. So after you've talked to the lender and you found out your price range that you're comfortable paying monthly, if you're getting a loan, if you have cash, that's great. We could talk about that in a different segment. Um, most first time home buyers are getting a loan of some sort. So once you have determined the price range that you're gonna be in, then most people are like, okay, let's go look at houses. Well, there's another step that you need to take before you just start going to look at houses. And that step is to figure out what's most important to you. But now that you actually know a price range, before we set up a search, you need to sit down with a good agent and figure out what is most important to you. You know, what about your daily life do you need to factor in to where am I going to live? Does it need to be close to a certain school? Does it need to be this many bedrooms or this many bathrooms minimum in order for me it to make sense for me to buy? You know, there's things like this, so you need to go through either yourself or with whoever you're buying the home with and figure out what's the most important thing that we need to have in a house. And once you've had that step done, then we can take the set next step, which is set up a search. The third step is to take that price range that you know you're in and the qualifications or the criteria that you that's important to you and then a really good agent that knows the area is going to be able to take those two things and say well with your criteria and with your price range here are the options here are the areas that you could search a good agent can sit down with you and say here are the areas that you're going to be able to find a single family home or a townhouse in that price range in and about that price range and so once you've narrowed those down you basically will look back at first and you'll say, okay, well, if I have to go to that area or I have to go this far to get a single family home, maybe a townhouse is something we should consider because it's most important to me to be not too far from where I'm working or the things that we do every day. So you have that discussion and then you're ready to set up a search. And setting up a search, um, your realtor can do it in an MLS system. We have a way to set up a search and put in the criteria, the parameters that work for you, and then we can email that. It'll come as an auto, automatic email um, each day, sometimes a couple times a day, depends on how many new homes come on, or new townhouses or new condos come on in that price range with your search criteria. So you'll get those through email, and then what we recommend is that you take a look at them, go through them, and setting up the search allows you to identify an area and maybe you even go to a few open houses in that in that area um, or drive around on the weekend whenever you have spare time um, during the day during the night to see what your commutes would be and once you've done all that you'll have a you'll be much more comfortable when it comes time to actually move forward and purchase a house because you've done your homework you've narrowed everything down you know what areas you can buy in you know what areas work and what areas don't work and then your agent can come in and be extremely helpful and help you fine tune the little things that you might not know um, by just you know looking at houses online. Okay, so now you've had your search set up and you're getting listings that are getting emailed to you automatically from your agent. Uh, and after that, you've gone around and you've driven to some of these areas that are how seem to be houses or townhouses or condos, whatever it is in your price range. So you're getting more familiar with the area, and now it's time to narrow down a few houses that you think 
you know, fit your criteria. Go see it with your agent. Um, if you need help with that, I'd love to help you. Um, but go see it with your agent, and then that's when everything comes together. That's when you'll know that everything that worked up until now to get to, we think this is the area and we think this is the type of house that we want, that's after you see a few houses, you'll be able to say, this is what works and this is what doesn't work. And we need a different floor plan or we need the bedrooms, you know, more bedrooms on the upper level or whatever it is. When you see the houses in the price range that you're targeting and in the areas that you think are gonna work for you, you'll know whether you're going to be able to find something, whether it be right now, you know, after you see two or three houses, or whether it be a few months down the road, you're going to know that in this area, I think I can find something that will work for us in the price range and in the area with the houses that I've seen, or do we need to go back and sit down with an agent and basically say, okay, here's what we found when we went to these areas and looked at these houses. Whatever it is that needs to be tweaked, you might decide, and this happens often, to kind of refocus the search. And that can happen in two ways. It can be in a different area, but it can also be, let's say you're putting 20% down, you might say, well, we qualified for a little bit more. Maybe if we put less down and go for a little bit higher price range, $25,000, $50,000 higher, maybe that puts us into different areas where we can find a house that is more suitable for what we need. And once you do that, once you have that location and done that initial search, it's, it's great to be then able to revisit and say, is it worth spending just a little bit more monthly on our monthly payment to get something that's perfect versus settling for something that you know, is in this price range and in these areas. The next step isn't one that always has to be um, the process for a first time home buyer, but I wanna insert it here because I like people to think, you know, sometimes a little bit outside the box. And remember when I said a minute ago that sometimes when you start looking at the houses, you find that the price range that you're targeting isn't exactly perfect. And you need to sit back down with your agent and either decide to spend a little bit more or um, go to a different area, you know, whatever that decision. But this is my point. When you're in that decision, if you happen to be in that time, or that place where the money that you want to spend or have to spend now isn't perfect for you or you and your family, um, buying real estate, whether it's your first home or your fifth home, it's an investment. So whether you're going to live there or where you're buying it as an investment property, just keep in mind that it is an investment. So what I find a lot of my clients end up doing when the money that they have to spend now isn't quite the perfect home for them they end up buying anyway, but they buy and they know that it's going to be their next two or three year property, that it will last them for the next few years. And they kind of change their thinking a little bit and they see it as this will be my first investment property. So they still buy in the price range that they targeted. They know that it's not perfect. They change their search parameters around a little bit and say, this isn't perfect. That's not perfect, but this will be fine for us for the next two, three, maybe even four years. And then we can keep this property as an investment property and then buy our perfect home once, you know, things are this or things are that, you know, whatever those reasons are that you kind of needed to move into a more expensive price range. So this isn't always a step for first time home buyers, but I don't like to discount the fact that a first time home buyer could also be making their first important investment property decision maybe a little sooner instead of paying rent month to month they can get in some place that they actually own that will later become an investment property so that's a step that's not always there but one that you should consider and i feel like is really important so to wrap things up you can see there are a number of things that you need to know as a first-time home buyer and steps that you should do in a certain order and a process that needs to be followed and that's why it's critical to have an agent walk you through the steps and processes to help you guide you through each step and stop and focus in one area or in another area before you get to the next step um, that's really important so keep that in mind as a first-time home buyer in our next video we're going to cover what happens now that you found the house that you like you're ready to put a contract on it so what happens contract to close thank you for joining us today for this segment of tom's tips and i hope you found it helpful 
To contact me or for more videos like this, click on the link in the description below and we'll see you soon.